Rep comes forward with details on Strzok's emails that prove Mueller's witch hunt is rigged by US4Trump.com. Congressman Darrell Issa joined Maria Bartiromo on Sunday Morning Futures discussing the latest revelations about Peter Strzok and emails. In December of last year, Judicial Watch sued for the emails regarding FBI agent Strzok's transition to the Mueller witch hunt team. Tom Fitton recently discovered newly released emails showing Strzok fought to keep his FBI security clearance. The emails reveal uh, Strzok begging for his security clearance from Counterintelligence Division William Prystab. Strzok said, broadly, I need to be able to act at least in the capacity of my old CDDAD job approved NSL National Security Letters, uh, conduct redacted declassify information, redacted agent travel requisitions, etc. Of those, the most problematic and one of the most essential is the declassification authority. Price staff replied, in answer to your initial questions, while assigned to the special counsel's office, you will retain your CDDAD authorities to include declassification authority. Since you uh, will take your non-transferable declassification authority with you, uh, CD will work to obtain another declassification authority slot for the DAD who is uh, chosen to replace you. Assuming the seventh floor approves, you will remain on CD's books as a fourth floating DAD. When you move on from your DAD position, your DAD slot will revert back to HRD. Well, in other words, he's going to have top security clearance on the uh, highly, uh, any sensitive information, he's going to have security access to it. Sunday, during the interview, Congressman Darrell Issa discussed the ongoing oversight over the FBI and DOJ by multiple congressional committees. Issa explained the request by the FBI agent Peter Strzok to transfer a set of special intelligence authorities gained during his investigation into candidate Trump into the special counsel. If we had known before what we know now, particularly about Strzok and others, there would not have been a special prosecutor, Issa declared. Uh, Daryl Issa, if we had known uh, before what we now know, uh, particularly about Strzok, we wouldn't have uh, a special prosecutor. August 8, 2016. Uh, and I'll preface it by saying this to, for context. Uh, Ms. Page said, not ever going to become president, right? Right? Uh, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Repeat that again. No, no, he's not. We'll stop it. August 15, 2016. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. That was Republican Congressman Darrell Issa questioning anti-Trump FBI agent Peter Strzok a couple of weeks ago during a joint House committee hearing last month. Meanwhile, newly released emails uh, are showing that Strzok wanted to keep his security clearance and other FBI powers as he transitioned away from the FBI and to the Robert Mueller Russia investigation. Congressman Darrell Issa joins me right now to talk more about that. He's a member of the House Oversight Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. And Congressman, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on, and thanks for teeing it up with the fact that the more we know about Peter Strzok, the more we need to know more. Yeah, well, we, we, well that's what I want to ask you. I mean, I want to ask you where your investigation stands right now. But first, what about this idea that Peter Strzok did not want to give up his security clearances? A moment ago, I was talking uh, to, to Congressman Peter King about this revolving door about how security clearances perpetuate top-level corruption in the United States because they're using their security clearances as their bona fides to get a new job, and then they're using that job to actually lash out at President Trump if they don't agree with him. 
Well, exactly. And this isn't new. At the end of the Clinton administration, uh, we had people showing up and putting uh, classified documents into their clothes and walking out with one of a kind documents because they still had access. Uh, this is a problem. In the case of Peter Strzok, what was interesting was he didn't just want to keep his clearance. He wanted to keep, to use a term, special powers, powers that even the, uh, the Speaker of the House doesn't have. Issuing national security letters, meaning doing investigations without the normal protections of, uh, of, of a court order, and uh, the ability to declassify documents selectively, meaning to create an environment in which you could leak something and say it isn't classified because you've declassified it. For Mueller, these were special powers that no one understood he, he had, and Peter brought to the to the fight, if you will. So should President Trump be revoking these security clearances for those people who are no longer working in government, like a John Brennan, like Clapper? Well, there's a principle in, in classified information, which is need to know. And if you're acting the way uh, Brennan or Clapper, who lied to Congress and admitted it, uh, if you're acting that way, you no longer have a need to know. Uh, and for that reason, they shouldn't. And I think the important thing is, if you're a former cabinet officer, you're a former high-ranking official, uh, and you might be called, great. But that's a decision of the president or the current administration. And I think it's extremely important that this not be a guarantee, a right, but rather a privilege uh, of those who continue to volunteer and help America in these difficult times. There are many people, former commandants and so on, who maintain their clearances and they, their behavior is such that we want to have them as advisors, but there are, there are clearly exceptions. Congressman, your committee, the Judiciary Committee, as well as Intel and Oversight, are investigating really what happened during the 2016 election, and, and, and I want to ask you where that investigation stands. But first, listen to this. Listen to Jim Clapper, former head of the NSA, on CNN recently, basically admitting that President Obama directed these agencies. Listen to this. And I'm alluding now to uh, the president's criticism of President Obama for all that he did or didn't do uh, before he left office with respect to the Russian meddling. If it weren't for President Obama, we might not have done the intelligence community assessment that we did that set off a whole sequence of events which are unfolding today, notably Special Counsel Mueller's investigation. President Obama is responsible for that, and it was he who tasked us to do that intelligence community assessment uh, in the first place. Well, there you go. He just admitted it, that President Obama directed the intelligence agencies to launch these special investigations into possible collusion between Trump and Russia, of where, of course, we have no evidence of. How far up the ladder do you think it goes? Well, it clearly goes to the top, and this is the problem we had with the last administration was uh, there was this sort of deniability by the attorney generals and by the president. And then later on, you discover, no, they were intimately involved. And no question at all, this is an example where President Obama was hoping, in fact, to win the election and, and use this information against the opposing party. Uh, Hillary Clinton didn't win. They got, a, they got a special prosecutor under essentially false pretenses. If we had known before what we know now, particularly about Peter Strzok and others, there would not have been a special prosecutor. People in good faith called for it based on false information created by the Obama administration. Well, 